welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Family Business Show. And this week we take you right in the heart of Nairobi to meet the Kote family who run the first ever human garage in the world by the name Premier Rehab and Wellness Center right here in Nairobi. My name is Vanessa Ndavi and as always I promise to teach you one or two things about business. Enjoy. I went to school at a, at a school called uh, Terrace One Primary School, now it is called Angaine Primary School. And then I went to secondary uh, at Nari Secondary School in Meru. And from Nari Secondary School in Meru, um, I ended up going to uh, the Kenya Medical Training College to study physiotherapy. And after studying physiotherapy uh, for some time, uh, I got bored. And I, <laughs> I got bored and I wanted something more. So I ended up uh, started looking for ways that I would go outside of the country to go and improve my education. I ended up going to the UK um, um, to work at the Royal Free Hospital as a physio. And then uh, again, I realized there was no big difference between what I was doing in Nairobi and what we were doing in London. So I wanted to quit and do something else. Uh, but in the process, I asked one of my professors who was an orthopedic surgeon, what else would one do? Uh, in a hospital. He was like, yeah, I can become a doctor. I said, I don't want to work in a hospital. I don't want to be that kind of a doctor. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, why can't you look at osteopathy and chiropractic? And it was my first time to hear about the terms. So uh, I looked at them up. They're pretty expensive. Um, and I applied to osteopathic school in the UK uh, and, ch and chiro in the UK. Uh, again, I didn't have the money to go to school. So I decided to come back home. And when I, get, I came back home, I was working at Nairobi Hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, and while I working at Nairobi Hospital, I met a patient who um, gave me 50 million Kenya shillings to go to school, to chiropractic school in the US. So I ended up going to Palmer College of Chiropractic in Davenport, Iowa, in the US. Um, it was a new experience, a different way of thinking. Uh, and then what was interesting in, 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 uh, in chiropractic is that Chiropractic has like um, a philosophy. So uh, chiropractic is divided into three, as a science, as an art, and, as an, and, and also having a philosophy. My name is Hadija Hamid Hamisi. I'm currently the CEO at Premier Rehab and Wellness Centers, also the co-founder and director in the Human Garage. So uh, basically my story, uh, I'll try and shorten it uh, as much as possible. I'm born and raised in a small town in the coastal region, that is Malindi. Um, I, I was actually brought up in a family of five. I, I happen to be the second born of the family. And at the same time, I was the only girl in the family. So it was quite an interesting uh, journey for me. Um, I remember growing up as a, as a girl. Um, I wanted to have a position in, in the society because I wasn't brought up from a high end um, class and uh, I happened to school in a school where most of the people in the community were people that are well off so I wanted to have a name in the school and the only way to do it was be good in the books so I my best friend was books uh, when I was still in chiropractic uh, my, my, my sponsor uh, Jerry, the late uh, Jerry Grison who I call my American dad um, kept on telling me I need to be different than um, than any other chiropractor down the street. Mm -hmm. It's like, if you were to work in America, what would, what would, what would make people come to see you? Yeah. Um, so I started looking at, course, uh, at different things. And at the time, my professor for anatomy, when I was in Parma, mm -hmm. uh, started saying, was, was saying, was mentioning a lot in class that there's, a new tissue, there's this new tissue that has not been given a lot of attention mm -hmm. that seems to be gaining a lot of interest. And that was the connective tissue then, fascia. So um, I'm the first one to be certified as a black person in the world. I'm also the first one to be certified in Africa uh, to practice fascia manipulation. And to me, I, I highly believe that, um, or rather, there's a lot of evidence 
there's a lot of research to back what we're doing and to be able to show that uh, sometimes we do so many complex things for a simple solution. Very small age, all my things are different. I have from my, I, I built my own bike from zero, buying one wheel, a, a tube, a wire until the bike was complete. So I've always like putting things together. And for me, I like knowing why. If you cannot explain to me why, I can't listen to you. But what, 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 really, what really did not make sense to me is that the same patient five or 10 years later would be admitted in the same hospital with a stroke caused by the same blood pressure. And if they are not lucky, they would be killed by the same. Tell me what inspired this business? Because you would have done that and go and get employed. You in Nairobi Hospital, you could get a job in America, you could get a job in UK. What made you start this business and name Ken? Um, my, my American dad, um, when, when I was asked, when I told him I want him to help me go to school, or rather when we were talking, when we were discussing about school, he asked me a question. First of all, he called and asked, this is a patient that served in Nairobi Hospital. So he called after he'd left the country and went back home to ask what is it that he can do for me. He wanted to send me some money, you know, like just give me some money. And I told him, no, I don't want money. If you want to help me, I want to go to school. Then he asked me why. And I told him, for me, is again, the same thing I've said, the frustration of working in the hospital and not seeing results. You're treating a back patient today, mm -hmm. tomorrow, the whole year, and they're not getting better. Yeah. So I said, one, that is one, I need to know why. Number two, I need to be able to come and train other people in my country so that we can open many clinics to help many more people who are suffering. I decided I was just going to start a, a, a back clinic. We call it the Premier, uh, it's called the Premier Rehab, uh, Premier Spine Clinic. Yes. Where was the first branch? The first branch was on, down on General Madenge. It was a room this size. Um, we had, I had, I was the only, I had two, I had my, myself, a cleaning lady and the secretary. Um, it was in General Madenge. When I came back, my American dad died before I graduated. So I did not have cash. To, 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 you know, to come and start a business. Mm -hmm. However, I had saved a little of money uh, here and there because my American dad used to support me with a lot of pocket money. So I, would, I used to divide my pocket money and I would, I would save mm -hmm. some of it. Um, another patient of mine, uh, his name is Peter Kenyo. He sells coffee, but he used to be a patient of mine, uh, came to see me and we were, the, the, the place where I was working on a colleague's place wasn't, in, wasn't he didn't like it. So he was like, we need to help you move to a better place. Mm -hmm. So he gave me some money and I added the money I had uh, and we started um, a fast clinic. You're a lucky lad, huh? Yeah, um, I don't say it's luck. I think you need to know what you want. Mm -hmm. And once you know what you want, you go for it. When you go for it, nature conspires to make it happen. So we started by opening four branches. We opened Nakuru, Nyeri and Mombasa just to see uh, the reception on, on the, the ground. And we realized uh, the, 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 the awareness is such a new thing we are bringing into the market. And people have not start understood it. So they are comparing what we are doing with physio. In them on how to work with the fascia so that then they can take responsibility of running that practice as their own. Yes. Question number one, what's fascia in simple words that my shosho can understand when you're shosho watching this show? It's a skin underneath the skin. When you eat meat, there's a nylon mm. you find that is not fat, that is fascia. Now, you talked about you wanted to do this, you wanted to start this business to train more people in your own, like in your home country. Yes. Anyone who is in working here, have you trained them? So if I come here, I go to Nakuru, I'm going to get the same service as I'm getting in Nairobi. Yes, or oh, oh, we take... We have a we have a, we have an eight week training program for the therapist. So first of all, we get phys right now uh, we are using physiotherapist. The aim is to later on to have medical doctors be part of our recruitment uh, clinician. So we get medical doctors, and when we uh, sorry we get physiotherapists from school. We like taking them fresh from school mm -hmm. because we are teaching them a new art. It's difficult to teach a new art to people who have been in the practice for some time because they already have a fixed way of thinking. Uh, so anyone who is working here has been trained for, for, the, for eight weeks. Mm -hmm. They have also been trained by uh, international providers that we bring mm -hmm. from Italy. 
um, we believe in giving opportunity for everybody irrespective of uh, physical challenges or disability. So in our team, we have uh, two ladies who are visually impaired and our lead uh, um, recovery specialist is a double amputee. My youngest patient is three months. Now let's come back to business. This is a business that you run with someone from your family member. Who is that and when did you start working together and how has that been? Um, when I started my business, my first co-director was my mom, or rather still my, she's still one of the directors. And then um, 2016 something happened. Um, um, I, I, I found a missed call. I found a missed call on my phone. It was one of my, uh, uh, my, my niece who had called. So I called back. When I called back, um, <laughs> the voice on the other side was not my niece, of course. But it was a nice voice. I was like, oh, wow, that's a nice voice. So when she hung the phone, she said, okay, I'll come, I'm going to tell your cousin, your niece to call you. My niece called me uh, maybe a day later. Mm. And I was like, hey, I want to meet that girl. And she's like, uncle, leave it. And I'm like, no, 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 I want to meet her. So um, long story short, we met. And it was just a click. We just clicked. My name is Hadija Hamid Hamisi. I'm currently the CEO at Premier Rehab and Wellness Centers, also the co-founder and director in the Human Garage. So uh, basically my story, uh, I'll try and shorten it uh, as much as possible. I'm born and raised in a small town in the coastal region that is Malindi. Um, I, I was actually brought up in a family of five. I, I happen to be the second born of the family. And at the same time, I was the only girl in the family. So it was quite an interesting uh, journey for me. Um, I remember growing up as a, as a girl, um, I wanted to have a position in, in the society because I wasn't brought up from a high-end um, class and uh, I happened to school in a school where most of the people in the community were people that are well off. So I wanted to have a name in the school and the only way to do it was be good in the books. So I, my best friend was books. We've come to the end of part one of this week's episode of the Family Business Show. We'll be right back after a quick commercial break. Don't go far. Welcome back and in case you're joining us for the first time, we are speaking to the Kota family who ran their first and the only human garage in the world. Getting to Uma was also quite an eye-opener for me because that's where I did my degree in business management and uh, administration and I focused in the finance bit. And it was during that phase now where I met Hamisi. Um, our story was quite interesting. Uh, I started slowly involving her in my business before, um, because we did it for about three years before we got married. And then when we got married officially, uh, I, proved, I, proved, uh, I brought her over as a, as a, as a, as a, as a manager. Um, and over the last three years now, we've been together four years. Now she is uh, the, uh, the, co the company CEO. She helps me run all the administrative work. I do the clinical part. She does all uh, the administration, the marketing, uh, customer care, etc. So she runs the team. I run away from that. <laughs> Well, it has its own ups and downs. Uh, in the beginning, you know, you're not, you know, in the beginning, you're two different people. Mm. You, uh, and then you have a dream, and the other person comes, they also have a dream. You know, initially you, you clash, but then over time, we now are speaking the same language. We are doing the same thing. So it, 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 it wasn't smooth in the beginning, but right now, I think we are very tight together. Um, when we get home, I love getting a spot that I know when I talk to him, it will come out in a good way. It mm. won't sound like I'm trying to be mean or demean him as the man of the house. Mm. So you, you just have to do that. You just have to do that sometimes. Otherwise, there will be a lot of uh, misunderstandings. And the most important thing when it comes to a relationship, especially when you're working with your husband, is communication. You want to get a salary here, including you and her. And yes. Everybody, this company is designed in a way that is not me. It is, it is not, uh, my, the aim of this company is not for me. This company belongs to my team. It does not belong to me, it belongs to the team. Being working with your wife, it has its ups and downs. Yeah. You would have your issues, you would argue, disagree, or agree every time. I have no idea. So, 
how have you managed to stick together all this while and be able to manage your conflicts and not bring them to the office? It's a place we come to work. Okay. Uh, when we leave, when I leave, when I move from our door and I get to my car and I head home, I'm wife and husband. I mean, sorry, I'm husband and we are husband and wife, uh, and we forget about premier. Of course, we sometimes we'll discuss it at home, but we forget what happened here because what happened here then uh, it has to be forgotten. It wasn't easy before because you know uh, maybe maybe I wanted us to do this way, my man. Maybe my wife is like, there's no money, you know. <laughs> Uh, but now, over time, we have realized how, how to balance, mm -hmm. and, 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 and I think it's really great. It's really great because everybody knows their role, everybody knows why they're doing what they're doing, and then we all now t uh, imagine that we work for Premier, meaning we, it's like the way you're employed uh, by uh, TV47. So we go to work to Premier, and we leave Premier, not as owners, mm -hmm but as workers. I love getting a spot that I know when I talk to him, it will come out in a good way. It mm. won't sound like I'm trying to be mean or demean him as the man of the house. So mm. you, you just have to do that. You just have to do that sometimes. Otherwise, there will be a lot of uh, misunderstandings. And the most important thing when it comes to a relationship, especially when you're working with your husband, is communication. Yes. Down, down the line, would you one day think of uh, employing professionals who have done what you what you've done and what your wife has done to run the business, and then you step aside? We are actually in that process right now. Um, right now, we have hired. Uh, uh, we start the way we have started. We have started by hiring um, a, a proper finance person. We have done a communication person. We have done a customer care person. Uh, we are working with a strategy person. So these people now ha are coming to sort up the mess, to make it a cooperation. What triggered that decision? Uh, because again, for me, um, my aim is to heal the land. My aim is not just to accumulate wealth. My aim is to leave a legacy. So the only way to leave a legacy is to be able to, um, to not be mean, and not just to want to hold into anything, but let go. It's not easy, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. yes, it is not easy, but I've been able to. My wife has really been supportive for me to manage to let go a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So uh, being able to agree to let leadership of the clinic, being able to agree to let other people run even the clinical part, uh, is not easy. So that- Your business to, to you, your wife, and it's a family business. So. What has given you that discipline to finance? You cannot just walk in the counter and say, I want a million dollars because I want to buy a harness belt or Louis Vuitton bag, and because I can. Uh, because I did that mistake before. I did that mistake when I started the business. I didn't pay myself. Uh, I always said, okay, I'll pay myself when the company makes money. And then every time you just pick money from the, from the counter, but then you realize you can't grow that way. Okay, so you have a, men a business coach, have a business mentor, and I also, uh, I'm also in class, I'm in school, training on how to run a business. Uh, same thing with my wife, in fact, we are doing the training with her. So the idea is to understand that, hey, when you just want to hold everything, it's too small. When you share, it's too big. I want to share, because most of the people doing business in one way or another, they kind of have their own secret mm, ways around so they, they are not straightforward so they don't want to open up that easily so I, I never loved that in a man and I used to tell myself if I'm ever going to meet a guy I want it to be someone who will be so honest with me so open and I would love to know what he's doing that's what I want and if possible if he's struggling I want us to struggle together for and him his idea was can I get to a play as in uh, employ so many people and then train them to be as good as, as me and we open up clinics as many as, po as, many as possible mm. where we can help people everywhere in the world. But then it didn't work because then um, as a business you have to have structures well articulated okay, so yeah. before you have someone coming in they have to know what they're coming to do and he wasn't like a real manager he's more of a functional person where now he's doing the practical part of dealing with patients mm. so i had to take up that role for him
and uh, it's, it's not easy, trust me, it wasn't easy because I was coming in as a new person, trying to create new rules, trying to put boundaries where they needed. And uh, of course, it had to come with a lot of pull mm. and yeah, every side and yeah, so, but we thank God, here we are now. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what are some of the challenges that you came across when you started working together? You want this, you want that, you want this. You all have different things, but it's all for one cause. What are some of those challenges? Um, it's a lot of things. First of all, having your husband accept that, hey, uh, sometimes you have to agree that you won't be all correct all the time, as much as now you are the vision bearer. But then you have to put the logit logistics when it comes to reasoning in the business. So it was a bit challenging. And considering that uh, we were both new in the whole thing. So. That's right. You know, we started with this, now we are here. And what would you like to do in the future? Okay, so in the beginning when we were coming in, we still didn't have that much clarity in our product, in what we are offering, because uh, he, he still had uh, not developed so much interest in the fascia manipulation aspect. He had done two courses in South Africa, mm. but then he wasn't so curious. So it was until when he went for his third course in Italy, he came back with a lot of curiosity, like this thing is working. So he was like, can I try it on you? So I ended up being his guinea pig. <laughs> yeah, so it's during that time now he started applying whatever he was doing on me because personally I also had my own medical history that was interesting and at a point in time I was told that I would never have a baby. So he said, what? I think we can fix you. I'm like, okay. So he will get his book and I'm like, yeah, let's work on this point. Let's work on this point. And he's like, how are you feeling? How is today? So that, that period was interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah. Applying that on me, I started changing naturally, automatically. And that's the time I knew whatever he's doing is really powerful. And it's really working. It's really powerful and it's beyond us, not just me and him, but then beyond us. It's like God kept it here because people need it. Do you like your daughter to join your business? Um, I would love to, um, though it's a, her own personal choice. The, the good thing about this business is really, really genuine. It's really, really honest and uh, that's the biggest aspect that I really find myself like clinging into doing it every day and making me wake up and go come to work. Yeah. This like your daughter to join your business or that's a decision to make? Uh, I think I, I think it's good to let someone make their own decision. Um, if she would love she'd love to come and join me, she's most welcome. If she doesn't want to join the business, that's up to her. Um, she'll have a share in the clinic, but she will not be the boss. None of my children will be the boss because there's no boss in this clinic. We are all bosses. Wherever you work, you are a boss there. So, um, and the reason why to do that is to avoid inheritance quarrels. I don't want my company to go down because people are fighting over inheritance. I want my company to grow. So um, my daughter will have as ch shares, she can sit in a board meeting, she'll be there to make decisions, but there will be like a trust that runs the, the organization. What is the succession plan for Premier? Premier? Rehab and wellness, wellness center. center. The succession plan is to hand it over to the team. That is the success succession plan. Um, it's going to grow big, like Safari Coma has grown big, I'm sure of it. It's going to be grow very big. So when it grows very big, you have, to let, you have to give it back to the community. It's not mine. It has to go to be the community where I belong, where I came from. Mm. What's your legacy? My legacy is to change medicine the way we know it today. Three things that no one knows about you. Uh, that um, I'm a health addict. I, I eat healthy. Uh, that uh, I'm very silly. <laughs> and that I don't take a no for an answer for anything. What's your biggest fear in life? Nothing. What's your favorite animal and why? My favorite animal... Oof. I think elephant. Um, intelligent. Yeah, it's intelligent. What's your biggest fear in life? I don't think I have fear. No. Um, what is your 
favorite destination? Oh, right now is to go to space. That is my dream. But before, uh, it's the BVI. I went to the British Virgin Islands sailing for a week and that was amazing. How does it feel to be a pioneer of something that no one has ever done before in the world? It's great but very challenging at the same time uh, because you, uh, you're, trying to, you sell, you're trying to sell something to people and they think you're nuts. Are you ever scared of pain? No. Um, my parting shot will be, Rome was never built in one day. Rome was never built in one day. Do something, keep on doing it, consistency pays. Trust me. <laughs>